What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I am your interim host, Nick Scarpino, alongside the czar of NAR, Snowbike Mike. Yo, what up, Nick? It's a Snowbike Mike takeover episode, so you know it's going to be fire, everybody. Mike, normally I would say that red is not your color, but I'm not going to lie, bro, <laughs> bro. This shit is hitting on all cylinders for me right now. He and wears like, red oh. all the time. I mean, again, normally I would say it's it. Not your color, not your color. <laughs> that voice you're hearing right now, of course, is oh man, I have so many documents up, Kevin. Uh, Hispanic the Hispanic heartthrob, heart Texas treat, Latino, he's <laughs> clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting headshot, nitro rifle from Twitch TV. Andy Cortez, Andy, he, what kind of morning are we having today? You know, it's uh, you know, it's summertime, Nick. When we get a new Red Bull flavor. Ooh. Ooh. Strawberry apricot is the brand new flavor for this year. Um, of again, these are the these are the ones with all the calories and all the sugar in them. And I, I'm a changed person. I can't drink more than like a fourth of this in a day. <laughs> like it is the sweetest thing of all time. Um, and I had a bit of it this morning. Um, and I'm gonna take another sip for you just to, for the audio listeners. Ready? Audio listeners, listen up. <laughs> strawberry and apricot tastes like oh, tastes like strawberry and apricot. oh okay. that man yeah. of course with the cutest palm on the planet is the second best baby blues in all of san francisco the man with the master smile that is tim gettys tim how's little t do it as you referred to him before little we t. started the podcast that's what we call little t. t uh me i'm big oh. t he's little oh. t it's a whole thing you know yeah, Andy, when you just asked that i did not expect name. there to be an answer <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I made that up on the spot, but uh, yeah, little T, G, little G is on a, a phone call right now, and the boys were getting a little rascally, so mm -hmm. I had to take him all. He'll be leaving us soon, but he just can wanted you, to hang out for a second. Can mm -hmm. you define rascally, Tim? Mm -hmm. uh, loud, which really just means this guy is a sweetheart and Moose is an asshole, but like, you know, mm. <laughs> I'm doing my service by taking the easy to deal with one away from the hard to deal with one. So Are they always doing this at each other? Oh, they're just wrestling. That stuff's fine. That's fine. It's when Moose starts getting all like he wants the like we're giving both of them treats, and Moose is like, no, 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 I get two treats. Oh. And it's like that ain't how it works, bro. Ah yes. oh, man, I was wait. So who watches Moose right now? Did we go over this already? Where's Moose? Did you look? Oh, he's, he's he... upstairs. He's just okay. chilling. They were just they were just too making too much noise. And Jesus, Moose is at work. Call. You have to separate. Yeah, Moose is at work. Yeah, I like yeah. To, I like to imagine Moose has just like a pencil behind his ear and he's just like mm -hmm. typing that next email. He's like, I just <laughs> yeah. got it. Gotta get it. Leans back. He's like, Oof, it's <laughs> fucking barely Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, I wish it was Friday already, man. But it feels <laughs> like a Monday. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is uh, the kind of funny podcast where each and every week, four sometimes five best friends gather around these microphones. Each should just talk about some stuff uh, before we get to that of course we got a couple housekeeping things i want to tell you about one of which very excited for uh the new porty line is up and running over on kind of funny.com slash store this is that we got a banger of, of a merch lineup for we, we've had it all year and we, we're just going to keep this bad boy going until 2023 please check this out uh because i have a feeling these are going to go fast again they already went fast and they're going to go even faster so check those out of course we have the sensei scarpino shirt as well if you didn't know i am aware of all martial arts on the planet if you just invented one spoilers i know about it so if you want to <laughs> know about all the martial arts as well go over and get that sensei scarpino merch it's hot it fits just right just like these hands against your face uh yeah. Uh, shout out to our right. Patreon producers, <laughs> Anonymous, <laughs> uh, Nathan Lamotha, Lamth, Lamoth, Lamothe, uh, Delaney Twining, <laughs> Gordon McGuire, and Fargo Brady. How would you how would you say this? L A M O T H E, Lamoth, Lamoth. It, it was just fun watching you try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's like yeah, it's like watching a kid try to walk for the first time. Like, ah, did he get it? Now fell on his ass. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of the Kind of Funny Podcast is brought to you by me, Undies and Credit Karma. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Back to the show. Back to Real the quick, show. Uh, you're talking about uh, Mike wearing red, which, by the way, Mike, I, I think it is the combo of the, the thick black rim glasses with the, the red hoodie. You are looking good right now, Thanks, and I've appreciated it a lot. Uh, but this weekend, uh, Gia and I went to a fine establishment called Chevy's, uh, mm -hmm. which Chevy's, I, 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 I might need stuff. to explain because I, I learned this weekend that Chevy's is actually a Bay Area thing. 
I thought it was more of a worldwide yeah, phenomenon. I've never heard of Chevy's. It's it's a set. It's a Tex Mex, Fresh Mex is what they call it. Uh, so like it's it's whatever Mexican food. Um, but Gia really really likes it. So we were there and uh, we look over and there was a family enjoying a lovely brunch on a Sunday there, as one does. And um, the 13 year old boy looked exactly like Snowbike Mike, and he was rocking a uh, hundred thieves red hoodie. And I was like. <laughs> It's my guy. Is, is this Snow Mike Mike? Is it could be some in. weird variant phenomenon going on right now. The thing about Snow Mike Mike is you never know where he's going to show up, right? He's like, he's like, it's like when you you park and you go, oh, fuck, I don't have any change and I left my credit card at home. And then you reach in your pocket and you have that one lucky quarter. That's Snow Mike Mike mm-hmm. right there, right? He just, he just stopped you from getting a $300 ticket and he may or may not have forgotten a cell phone charger. I'm loving, by the way, the misadventures of Snow Mike Mike out in the back country of Tahoe Ooh. wilderness getting out there sh- you shroud in the narnar as the summer a- a- days go on i said a lot of things there that made no sense <laughs> yeah well, can you spell I the like word it. before narnar shroupin <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be made up the hard that's- no then andy hard no you cannot <laughs> no i don't think i can spell that but to be fair i can't spell most words i'm a terrible speller so okay. yeah because that's Shrelpin. just i've listen, never andy, heard that ever <laughs> andy listen you don't you never get up on the slopes i've never <laughs> seen you on the slopes once you don't understand the lingo you don't understand how the kids I talk mean, to each other when they're snowing. i'm the one who named him the czar of gnar like that's i know cool. that i know you go up there and you <laughs> shred cool. the gnar <laughs> it's pretty cool says nick <laughs> you gotta shrop the gnar gnar man but i feel do. like you're just like maybe shrop was an attempt of a bunch of different words into one just just like Tim thought that Chevy's was worldwide, some of these colloquialisms are just very Got localized it. to my old friends who say these things and were and maybe I was high when they said them, so maybe I just misunderstood them completely. Gotcha. But going back to Chevy's for a second, Tim. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. glad you brought this up because that's one of those things we've talked about before where you grow up in something and you just think your entire world is the entire world. I always thought I was I always thought Chevy's was a bigger franchise than it is too. I thought when since I've been it for so long, I'm like, it, there, surely there's more than one or two Chevys. But I guess you're just saying it's local now. Yeah, yeah. Because I was surprised there was like like Golden Gate bridges everywhere, and I said to G, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool that they're big enough that they're kind of like making like local additions of all mm-hmm. these places. And then I realized that no, all over the menu it says a Bay Area uh, born and raised situation. It's like okay. Cool. Like, What's up, Chevys? Do you like, and Gia wish that it were sort of this worldwide phenomenon? I mean, look, I definitely I'm very prideful about San Francisco and the Bay Area and all that stuff. I don't know that I need Chevys to be on the list of things that mm. I like rock with. Having said that, I fuck with Chevys hard. Like they Chevys is definitely mm-hmm. it's on the list. It's on oh, Mike, you made a face. Are you not uh, a Chevy? No, see, I don't want to be the mood. I don't want to bring down the mood, but like we had a Chevy's up right here. No, nah, you don't want. You don't want to rock with Chevy's. You don't want to be Chevy's on your team. Chevy's you got a Chevy's move. up there? Yeah, I mean, it came and went. It came oh. and went. You know? oh, wow. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't hitting. It wasn't. You know what? You know what it with boils down to. The fine taste up in Tahoe. <laughs> you know what it boils down to? It's it's the chips, and I hate to say this mm. about about. I had to speak ill of the dead, but Chevy's chips are fucking terrible. They're wow. way too thin, and they're oh. way too oily. No, and I'll just I'll say they, it. They're thin. And it's kind of gross at first, but then you grit like they grow on you. It's kind of gross at first. It's kind of gross. Because then sometimes you'll get you'll you'll get one of those chips that are like they accidentally have like ten slices of of them together, and that's pretty good too. And they're kind of soft because they just like whatever they make them out of. Like they're still tortillas. The oil. I guess sh- things that that grow on you, I would never ever think that it's kind of gross at first. <laughs> like sometimes that's when, how it goes. Whenever something grows yeah. on you, you're kind of like, you know what? I'm not sure about this. This is, you know, this isn't the best I mean, thing I've ever tasted. Then it grows on you. But I've never once put something in my mouth and go, oh, "This is fucking gross." Maybe it'll grow on me. <laughs> like I, it's, it's, you've never done that. It's not like that's fucking gross. It's more just like, hmm, is this supposed to taste that way? Yeah. And then you stop. You're like. Do I like the taste? It's kind of yeah. like gas at a gas station or yeah, rain, rain on cement where you're like, it's kind of like Stockholm that's syndrome. not that good. And then you're like, I, li- I like it though, right? No, I mean, but it, that's yeah. how I used to feel about Diet Coke. I used to hate Diet Coke and now yeah. I can't live without it. That's how it goes. Yeah. But it, yeah. it is more like Stockholm syndrome in the sense that like, I'm here. Yeah, you know what? I have I literally have no other choice at this point. <laughs> uh, and we're laughing, but that's how it happens. Like you're just sitting um, there and you're like, I guess I'll drink more of it. I'll eat more uh, of these chips. 
I wanted to talk about like, are there any restaurants that you would prefer to be worldwide? So when I when I first moved up here, I used to go to a restaurant chain called El Torito, which I don't think they have up here at all. And that's one that I'm like, this should be worldwide. And you're asking yourself why? And I'll tell you why. Because it was the first time I experienced the, the little scoop of corn stuff they give you on the plate. That's like no. a sweet corn scoop thing. Cornmeal? Yeah. I don't know if it's oh. cornmeal or if it's like, Wait, I forget Chevy's what he's got, baby. The Chevy's corn thing? The you, know, you know the little, the little scoop they give you? It's like a sweet corn that like sits yeah, on the plate. That's... It's the bomb. And, the, and I remember El Chevy's Cerrito, I got that. that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not saying that other people places don't. I'm saying the first place I remember seeing it at was El Torito. And then my brother ordered an entire bowl of it one time. Oh, my God. During I Mother's love Day. Because we used to take my mom to the El Torito in Fashion Island, which is like a bougie El Torito. And my brother's like, can I just, the guy was like, what else would you like? Anything else? So he's like, can I just fucking ask? Can I just, can I just call this what it is? Can you bring me a bowl of the sweet corn stuff? And the guy did it. And I was like, can you shove it down my throat? Everything is possible. <laughs> I would like that restaurant to be there. But before we move on to other people's, perspectives of other restaurants that should be more popular i'll say one of the other marks against chevy's is that chevy's thinks that it's better than chili's and it's not better than chili's oh. chili's is, i love i, I love think they do this. i think that people that work at chevy's poo poo they look down on people really? that work at chili's and i gotta say chevy's <laughs> you chevy's employees pulling this out of his ass. yeah i don't think the chevy waitress <laughs> is thinking about chili's at all i think there's a no. rivalry between them and chili's is like thinks they're manchester united and fucking and they think that Liverpool. they're whatever uh, yeah sure uh, i couldn't name I, one other I, team i got you bro. <laughs> I, I will say that in my experience chevy's tend to be at least all the ones i've been to tend to be more of like a family affair where it's like a family owns the license or whatever for that one. Mm, it's uh, franchise. So not that everyone one. that works there is a family member, but like it, it does feel a little more like contained than than a Chili's, which like legitimately is anything fucking goes. Oh, he's Toretto. Oh, Toretto's being being beckoned. He's he's allowed to go back upstairs. So I'm gonna take him back. I will be right back. Okay, come right come back. Because be the reason right I asked Nick, it's with. like. I'm thinking about you, you go to you go out of town somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're in some place you're not super familiar with. Uh, maybe it's, you know, man, I did, this is strange surroundings for me. What are these restaurants around me? Oh, guess what? They've got a blank, though. And I could go to that restaurant and that'll mm -hmm. feel like home. Mike, like, what are yep. you thinking when you uh, if you go to if you traveled somewhere and you're like, God dang, this place just feels so unfamiliar. But they have this restaurant that I could kind of go to and I know and I'm aware of it. I got three. I got three. So, I mean, it's easy for me and Nick, right? The comfort zone, Starbucks. You yeah. got a bucks. We're there, right? We're the in the comfy the seat. Box, box. We're, we're messing around with some lattes. That's easy. Then I get into two and three. And here's my dreams, Andy. This is what I want your city to have when I arrive to feel comfortable, right? One, an in and out. We talk about it all the time. I'm an in and out guy. Okay. And in and out should be worldwide global they got the best burgers they got the best fries no they don't bring it Stop and in and out that. you know i'm gonna keep saying it. it's like jurassic world possibly <laughs> better than the first one but we'll get to that at another time we won't and we will not now number two number two noodles and company y'all ever mess with noodles and company y'all no. know about noodles i think i've heard of it i think i've heard Yo, of it. noodles is the spot y'all everybody should have a noodles noodles is just like mac and cheese spaghetti all sorts of noodles Noodles and Company, bro, and that's my spot. Right there. That makes <laughs> you me feel comfortable. That's not how you describe a place. <laughs> All sorts of noodles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of noodles, mac bro. and cheese, spaghetti, noodles and company. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> that's it right there. That's it. I need that's more. My spot. I need more description. <laughs> <laughs> like are they just <laughs> those are my go-to's i don't need anything else you know are what they mean? just giving you a pile of noodles <laughs> like what are you eating there how are you gonna... <laughs> are you <laughs> uh, this is how you know ladies and gentlemen that we're filming this podcast at the end of a very oh, long day God, bro. oh man are no, you looking up the menu what are you doing right I'm now i'm looking like? up the menu for you right now i mean you know what i mean this you, guy, you named two they things. <laughs> <laughs> then you they said got... noodles and company <laughs> mike i want you to know i often go to a place and i'll only order one thing there and never you, change Kevin. so never yeah change. i get it the place is spaghetti <laughs> Like, like, good. Baguettes, bro. You're there. You know what Anthony I mean? Corbett in the live chat says noodles and co is P good, which I assume means pretty good, but he couldn't be bothered to type the other four yeah. letters. Uh, uh, that Mike, you bring up or Andy brings up a really good point, right? Yeah. Which is like, what is 
What is the one thing you, you go to the new city, you're by yourself. What is that one restaurant? And for me, I think about a story where when we were touring around, obviously Starbucks, right? Starbucks is yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Like Mike said, I was like, well, no, no, Mike already said it. Mike, Mike already said it. Mike already said it. When you're the gone. reason so you why I was trying to, sh I was trying to stray away from that is because Starbucks are everywhere. Yeah. Like they, They're I was thinking more of like regional stuff. Maybe Tim goes somewhere and he's like, you know what? I wish this place had a Chevy's, you know, right. or, that's, or something so kind of regional to where you are. That's what I'm talking about right now, right? So I went. I remember going to Austin for, uh, for. I think it was a comedy show. We were doing something with Waiting for the Punchline, which is that documentary we did. And I went by myself. I had no friends there. And I, I didn't really, I was like, ah, I'm only here for like a night. And I ended up at the end of the night going to the International House of Pancakes, IHOP. And it was just so comforting because I've spent so many late nights in California at IHOP. And it was just me literally there watching a movie on my phone, ordering some whatever fucking weird thing I would, I felt I needed to eat for health. I think it was like bacon. I was like, can I have like four sides of bacon and a half of avocado? But that's one of those <laughs> restaurants that I love. I love it. Remember, Nick, remember, Kevin, you, me, and Joey ate at some kind of IHOP-ish like place in New York? We, no, we I wasn't with you. I wasn't with you in New York. Was it not? Maybe it was me, Joey, and Nick, maybe? Yes. Maybe. Remember it was like because a two, everyone, and two yes. or three in the morning. Maybe four in the morning. <laughs> it was so good, though. It was like, yeah. it was popping. Though. Remember, that was like a diner that was close close by where we had just finished drinks that mm -hmm. night. And I remember, oh, God, man, this is going to kill me because for some reason we were making fun of Joey, but I can't remember why it was. Andy, do you remember? Oh, something. Who knows? It was something. But it was really fun. It was really yeah. good. I, maybe it's because Joey was like, I don't. You guys have made fun of me all night and annoyed me. I don't want to go with you. And we somehow talked her into going to this diner together. And then I think I talked her into getting pancakes because I wanted pancakes. I can't remember oh, what it was. Gotcha. So it was this all like adds up. So Mike. It was something like that. I have brought up the Noodles & Co. website as well. Mm -hmm. Bring it up. Bring it up. Yeah, and yeah. I'm talking like this kind of seems like the most convenient place. It also seems like such a nightmare to go to. <laughs> um, because... You never want to be a restaurant that is a jack of all trades because you're likely not that. And here, Tim, you go to Noodles and Company, they have their classic noodle section, which contains spaghetti, spaghetti and meatballs, cavastapi, lemon, parmesan with shrimp, penne rosa, pesto, cavatappi. They, a lot of like Italian sort of stuff. You just you scroll down a bit. All of those words. <laughs> I want you to know there is nowhere okay, accurate. Okay, go slarp the gnar, okay? <laughs> 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 we also have an Asian Fucking noodle section. You, dude. He got the shit out of you. We have an Asian noodle section. Spicy Korean beef noodles, pad thai, Japanese pan noodles, grilled orange chicken lo mein. I'm fine with all of these things. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in the same spot where they're making Italian meals. And then you got the world famous Max, which is where Mike uh, brought up his one example of the two. Um, Buffalo chicken mac, Wisconsin mm -hmm. mac and cheese, BBQ mm -hmm. chicken mac. A little bit further down, stuffed pasta, roasted garlic cream tortelloni, three cheese tortelloni. Um, and then you go all the way down. It says zoodles My, and other noodles. I don't know what zoodles are. <laughs> That's the go. But I've seen noodles. There are zucchini noodles. This is pretty oh, great. Call it is zucchini noodles. You're My, right. My, this place shit. sounds great. Should we go? Now that's what I'm saying, Kev, because here's the thing. Andy was right until he was wrong, like always, right? Andy's sure, always sure. He's on that wave until it crashes into the fucking breakers. He was trying to paint the point of like, listen, Italian food, uh, you know, more Asian inspired cuisine. If they're noodles, those flavors usually don't go hand in hand. You got to specialize in one of them. But we have so many different variants here. We've gone through the looking glass. And wow. now I'm like, holy shit, everything, is, everything sounds great here now. I'm, I bet they're fantastic. Dude, I, I've never been to this Noodles & Co. place, but I am interested in everything Andy said. Just got me more and more and more interested. Because exactly, I'm with you with man. the jack-of-all-trades thing. That doesn't sound like the situation we got going on here. This seems like they know what they got. And they got the nudes, and they're going to do them right. I do want to give a shout-out to Gia Tap Harris's world-famous Zoodles. She's real good oh, at the zucchini noodle the stuff. Zucchini noodles. Tricks me every time. I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> that, that's, that's, I don't believe that. that for, I don't believe that for a second. That for a second. I picture Gia like sitting down Tim every time for a Pixie Co challenge. Like every time he eats him. All right, guess which one? Like, ah, she got me again. <laughs> for, whatever, yeah. for whatever reason, I pictured Tim in a life size like high chair. And she puts the bib on him and puts the zucchini noodles front. And as she's feeding him, they're just falling out of his mouth. He's like, I don't want this. But she puts on something on Disney Plus in front of him. So he's just distracted mm -hmm. enough to eat the zoodles. 
Also, I wanted to, I want it. We can't gloss over this, everyone, because mm. I know some of you fuckers heard this out here, and I can see a couple people in the chat caught it. Tim did, in fact, refer to noodles as nudes. N O O D. Yeah, the nudes, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. Okay. Gotta I've never heard it. that before. That's, that's, that just entered the, the vernacular now. Kind my, of funny my favorite. Forever. My favorite Thai restaurant uh, it, around me um, is, is whatever it's called. Don't want to say the name, but it has a name. Uh, but after 10 p.m., <laughs> they they stop uh, serving as what they're known as. And it, it's like that ghost kitchen shit we talked about. And they become three different restaurants. Hell and oh, wow. one of them is Send Nudes, which I yeah, really appreciate. That's really great. That's I, really great. I, but, dude, on that note, can I, I, I want to tell you guys an experience that I had that was negative this weekend, which breaks my heart to say. So I, um, well, the first part was good. Uh, me and and uh, D went down to the the museum and saw the Jim Henson exhibit, which is here uh, at the uh, over by the Metreon Museum. There, very very great. Almost cried like three times. <laughs> Apparently, I had a great childhood after all. Uh, afterward, we decided to go to <laughs> Tropic Sueño, which is one of my favorite Mexican restaurants in in San Francisco at night during the day. Garbage. Just mm. a terrible experience the worst lunch i've ever had in my life i ordered a taco salad and it was like greens cucumbers and a little bit of lime sauce with like three black beans it was horrible and very very overpriced so i don't recommend going there during lunch but dinner very very good i know you guys went over there for a drink the other night after uh, we saw dr strange did you vomit all over the puppets no, no, no. I went to the dinner. I went to lunch afterward. I like oh, to, when I go to my museums, Andy, I like to be fast. So I, I fast right beforehand. Hmm? Okay. Gotcha. That's yeah. your experience. <laughs> you like to go hungry, you know? <laughs> yeah, hungry. I like to, here's, well, here's why, honestly. I love, I love, first off, I love going to museums and I love going with my wife specifically because she loves museums as well. I like how clean they are. I love the polished concrete floors. And I love the fact that if you're a little bit hungry afterward, they usually have. Um, the uh, the museum cafe, which is my yeah. favorite little treat. And this particular museum is the 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 Jewish Heritage Museum. So they have a bagel, like it's like it's like a Jewish uh, deli as uh, for the cafe. Mm. And it's why when you walk in, it just smells like fresh bagels, and it's the best fucking thing ever. I highly walk, recommend. That. Walk into a place and smelling fresh bread, like being oh. made. That's a good. That's a good scent right there. You that's walk into a, a place. Scent. Um, I, I'll tell you what restaurant I would want around all over, all, anywhere I went within walking distance, right? It's really tough, right? Cause everybody knows I love my Peter Piper pizza, the pizza people pick. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that I love the pizza place via three, one, three, right? Oh, via three, one, three, my favorite pizza Ooh. place ever. Um, but I could see having that place two days in a row. Maybe I'm going to get a little too full. Like, ah, oh, there's a lot of bread, you know, mm -hmm. it's easily pluckers. I like having good wings oh, around. So right, having great burgers mm. around as well. Mm. Incredible um, waffle fries. There's so much variety there. There's so many drink variety as well. And not only like maybe you don't want the same wings you got last night. Get a different flavor. They got a buttload of that. My mouth's watering just thinking about it right now. <clears throat> I would love to just have a Pluckers somewhere nearby at all times. I that honestly, incredible. we've been to a whole bunch of places because it's kind of funny. And we've had a lot of different food. We've had a lot of different chains. Like, I feel like we pride ourselves in wanting to make sure that we are, we, we're well-tongued in, in the arts of the different chain restaurants around the, the country, if not the world. And I will say that the only one that I have craved and been like, damn, I hate that we don't have it here is Pluckers. That is a 10 out of 10 wing facility. Have I been to Pluckers? I feel like I have, right? I have to have, right? Not in my memory, I can't. I've I don't been know. there a handful of times, and I can't see you in my mind's eye at any of the. Where, where do when we go to Plucker? Is that a, that's the Austin thing? It's Austin. Austin. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, maybe one time. Let me ask you the all important question: What is the fried pickle situation at Pluckers? Are we dealing with spears, or or, or is this like a is oh, a chip situation? It's a spear. It's a spear joint. No. Oh man! Really? You say that now? <laughs> no. You say, you say that no. now, Nick. I'm telling you the best batter you've ever tasted on fried pickles. Like the, the, the problem, best yeah. fried batter ever, ever. It's ever, the batter ever. people bick. Mm -hmm. It is it's the batter is. people. Well, I will say that sounds enticing, to me, but I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna bite into that, and it's just gonna be a whole bunch of soggy pickle in the middle. No, and I don't crazy. know if I can get into that because, oh, as, as you guys know, I love the pickle chips from uh, from Hooters. When we used to go to Hooters back in the good. day, they, I know they're they're fantastic. The Hooters is a weird in, in situation, but whenever you you wind up in a Hooters, you got to get the pickle chips because that's the best thing in that place for sure. 
See, the problem, though, with the pickle chips, and this is just I've never had a pickle chip say otherwise, is it is the opposite of the problem you're saying of the sogginess. It is you're getting just pure fry. It, there's no – there's such little substance when it comes to the pickle itself. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want a little bit more pick. The, pick. the pickle chip, Snowbike Mike, is just a delivery mechanism for whatever good sauce, they de- the, the dipping sauce they delivered with the pickle chip. And, and Hooters, I think, has that like chipotle mayo that they give you. So freaking good. Nick, let bad. me let me be real with you. You know, I don't like to break Andy's heart, but mm-hmm. I fuck with you, big dog. I'm a pickle chip guy. Over Dude, thank speed. you. Okay? I you know, that. you and I, we're always in sync. We're in That's sync. why we're best friends. Look, look, here's the friend. thing. I'm not saying the pickle trick, pickle chip is in the pickle people pick. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is don't down talk and talk badly about the pickle spirit pluckers. Okay. Because you okay. haven't had it. Is well, what I'm saying. Off, I, haven't I haven't had it because you guys, every time we go to Austin, apparently you guys ditch me and either go to DA313 <laughs> or Pluckers. Which Joey in chat says that you have been there with Nick. That that Joey has been there with Nick at it. Uh, sounds, it sounds yeah. accurate. I think it sounds like I've been there once. I know for sure I haven't been to VA313 <laughs> because the last time I made Andy take me, I think it was oh. Andrea Renee was with us and she picked the one time she was like, We'll go to this one. It's closer and it was closed. And I never forgave her for that. I haven't talked to her since. Oh. Yeah. Via 313 is so good. The last time I went to Austin, I had Via 313 every single night for a four night <laughs> stay. And I had Cooper's barbecue every day at lunch. I had a pound and a half of beef <laughs> and I had mashed potatoes. And then I went to Via 313. Greatest your, time of my life. Your Greatest body was life. crying for help. <laughs> <laughs> did I have the meat sweats all day long? Of course. You know what I mean? Mike, how many times did you get that burger place last time you were down here? Oh, my God. Caliber, dude. I yeah. had that three times in a matter of four days, you know? Kevin knows. Kevin but knows. Cal- just so everyone out there at home knows, Caliber Burger, <laughs> just a random ass little burger spot. Like, it's definitely, like, it's <laughs> not making a list. It's never made any list. It's it no Jenny Burger. That's for sure. Burgers. It's <laughs> but, Mike, there. you find a place that you like, and it's Thank- like, I, this is a known mm-hmm. thing. Thank you, Andy. Thank I like you, Andy. it. I'm sticking exactly. with it. I that, get you. That's the whole start of this conversation, right? You go somewhere foreign. You look for the comfort. Nick introduces me to a spot that he likes. I like the burger. Now, next thing you know, it's the only thing I know. I order it every single day for the it's whole true. week. I, you know I, what I mean? You got to do it. But I'm a creature of habit like it. that, too. Sometimes, like, there's only a couple places. I, I still, to this day, I've lived in San Francisco for the better part of 10 years. And, like, I, I there are still, like, four, th- only three places that I Postmates from. Because I just like them. They're consistent. I know it's going to come the right way. And it's, it's, you know, it's not horribly unhealthy for me. But that caliber burger is not bad. Don't sleep on it. It is. But Tim's right. It's not like it's in and out where you're like, I got to get in and out. This, this story, oh. you know, franchise that everyone loves and or hates, depending on if you're in our chat. Um, God, I miss Burgermeister, dude. Oh, I miss Burgermeister. Where do you follow? Was Burgermeister better or less good than Whataburger? It's a different conversation. Well, well yeah, it's different. Oh, Burgermeister was the one we used to go to over by the... Uh, yeah, that was the one that used to get the sweet potato fries over that club. Yeah, Burgermeister is like a a, a dine in. Yeah, that's, that's not right. a fast food place. That's like mm-hmm. a, on the level of a wall bangers. Kevin, remember when we went to Fuddruckers? Remember that? Oh, fuck. I oh, said man. wall bangers. I meant Fuddruckers. Wall oh, bangers man, is local I'm, to the valley. I miss Fuddruckers so much. I, I want to try the place that uh, Burgermeister turned into. Nick I haven't. Oh, is that what it is? Mr. Burgermeister Burger. It's Mr. Beast Burgers? Greek. It, it's just Greek food. Yo, I love Mr. Food. Beast. Yeah. Y'all see what he's up to right now? <laughs> no, what's he doing? This Mr. Beast motherfucker, Kev, I'm going to send you a tweet. And uh, it's just utterly ridiculous. So Mr. Beast, YouTuber, known for spending a lot of money, giving people a lot of money, a lot of things involving money, really, really crazy, extravagant uh, situations. His latest scheme is oh. they're recreating... Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Including an entire actual chocolate river to go through the entire thing. Um, oh, so Lord. the tweet goes, we're in the early stages of recreating Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. This photo is like 10% of it. Why didn't someone tell me this would be so hard? He follows up saying, and while building this, we also have to terraform an island. I'm giving away an island for $100 million, but nice-looking big islands cost $20 million, So I bought an ugly big island, and we've been importing sand, hundreds of trees, building a lake, etc., to make it not look ugly. So please excuse the lack of videos. So dope. So dope. What the actual hell, man? Like, this is the most next level ridiculous thing I have ever seen. That's I thought you were talking close, about uh, the his exchange with Elon Musk. I thought that's what you were going to bring up. Mm. No, what, what was it, that? Elon Musk tweeted out 
if I happen to die out of nowhere mysteriously, just, you know, like, know that I blah, 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 goodbye, whatever. And then Mr. Beast replies, if that happens, can I have Twitter? And Elon Musk said, okay. Wow. That, that represents a binding agreement. I just want everyone to know. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is wow. this is incredible. And I love that he just does shit like this and can actually get away. Like, just do it. And he has this much money and it's just sheer creative. This is, a, I want to go here. I don't know. Oh my I, God. I was waiting for the butt. I was waiting for the butt. From, no, 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 no. I mean, Mr. Beast is fucking awesome. This guy. But the fact that he he's recreating them, first off, you don't start a project like this and see, unless you love the original Willy Wonka, chocolate, you know, Willy Wonka just as much as I do. He's never so seen this it. is cool that he did. You've never seen it? What? No, I said he's never seen it. But no, Mr. Beast, that'd be hilarious. It's like, I saw, I saw, I caught an image of this. I just want to recreate it. saw a giant depth one. <laughs> yeah, this is fucking cool. This is hilarious. But the, the thing about this that he's getting wrong, I can tell you right now, is that you can't eat all this. That was that was why every mm. kid, myself included, when I was an overweight little kid, wanted to go to the chocolate sure. factory because when you walked into this room, everything was edible or eatable, oh. as they say. I just wanted movie. to bite into the big gummy stuff. Like, I'm a big fan of just like uh, nobody likes dip and dots or not. No, people love dip and dots. Ask you, okay. nobody likes dots the candy. No, they're terrible. I what? love dots the candy. Also, dip and dots we've already established about three years ago are just a waste of a topping for no, ice cream because you're topping ice cream stop. with ice cream. Stop. No, no stop. one had. Stop. Ice cream Stop. with dipping dots Stop. on top of Stop. it. We've talked no, about yeah, this. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Stop. No Nobody one has that. that. Second no, of all, say, dots hey. are great. Dots are great. What an impressive idea. That is a, none of us it's thought not, big enough. The whole idea, <laughs> Nick, is using, like, no idea. Yeah, using dipping dots and sprinkles on top of regular ice cream. What a, what a, Whoa. <laughs> what a perfect, what a perfect thing. What a perfect Nick moment there that just happened. <laughs> not only not only did I not only did I misremember something. But I came up with a great idea that I then proceeded to shit on. Yeah. That is such <laughs> classic Scarpino. That is such a classic KF moment. And ladies and gentlemen, we're very, very happy that you could be here to share that moment with us. But we're going to take a moment right now to let you to talk to you about our sponsors. Shout out to MeUndies for sponsoring this episode. You know those days when your coffee shop is out of cold brew and your air conditioner breaks and you try to go to the beach but there's zero parking spots? Yeah, life can be hard. Good thing MeUndies is here to help you take a break from the hardships of the world and give yourself a soft summer. Of course, I don't need to tell you. I got the MeUndies shirt. I got the MeUndies lounge pants. I'm wearing the MeUndies undies, the socks. Even my face mask is MeUndies. I absolutely love MeUndies and their soft micro modal fabric and you're going to love it too. I absolutely absolutely guarantee it. With MeUndies light and breathable micromodal fabric, you can stay comfy and cool all summer long. They have super fun seasonal prints and tons of styles to choose from in sizes extra small all the way up to 4XL. MeUndies has a great offer for all of you. Any first time purchasers, you can get 15% off. If you sign up for the free to join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. Uh, to get 15% off your first order and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go! to meundies.com slash kinda funny. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash kinda funny. Shout out to Credit Karma for sponsoring this episode. Have you ever been rejected for a credit card? It happens way too often. That's why Credit Karma created Karma Confidence Technology, helping members apply with more confidence. Are you earning credit card rewards? Credit Karma can help you compare your rewards options so you can find a card that fits your lifestyle, helping you earn miles or cash back for spending money that you're going to spend anyways. Of course, I'm a huge fan of that. I love Credit Karma. One of my favorite features is how Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you your chances of approval before you even apply, which helps you apply with more confidence, and then it doesn't affect your credit score. Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your financial situation. Uh, they also partner with a wide range of card issuers, so you can be sure that you're exploring all sorts of options. I love Credit Karma. It's so easy to use. Fantastic stuff. Credit Karma, create your own karma. Ready to find the card for you? Head to Credit Karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today. Go to creditkarma.com or the Credit Karma app to find the card for you. That's creditkarma.com. And we're back. Can we do we're a back. new thing and not tell Greg about it? But when we do this table, mm -hmm. did I mute myself? No, I'm still mute. Okay. When we do this table, we do uh, rock, paper, scissors. So we go like, bah, bah, and then the third one, we like do a thing. Oh, I like that. And then sure. and Greg will be like, what's going on? And he'll be so confused. He'll be yeah, so confused. Doing he hates right? when he's not involved. It'll be such a prank, yeah. Oh, dude, I'll tell you what, Andy, you're on to something. If it's not that, we need to come up with a phrase that when someone says it, we laugh so hard 
and everyone in the live chat, you got to come no, with us too. We're bad fake laughers. Just be laughing. And then just be like, oh, man, you had to be there and try to keep that going for like four or five weeks until he eventually fucking breaks and, start, and starts now, crying. It's funny you say that because I feel like just by default, that's just what happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. We don't need to like fake that. There's going to be something next week where like we're going to say something and all we're going to like dip and dots and we're all going to be like, ha ha. And Greg's going to be like, oh, you <laughs> fuckers. You know what I mean? That's how that's simple true. we are as creatures. We did have we did have a criticism of Dippin' Dots. Was it that they just no. are not the best delivery mechanism for ice cream? I think that's what the criticism was. You you've you've brought it up before. You've actually have mentioned that you used to then put it on as a topping and been been floored that no one else has done this. But like no one else has done accurate. this. We like Dippin' Dots. We like Dippin' Dots. Yeah, we're a lot. Dippin' Dots house. Yeah. We are How could you not house. like Dippin' Dots? I just don't. I can't. I, I feel that. it because like, I feel like they are just not. The preferred delivery mechanism for ice cream. If I'm gonna eat ice cream, I'm gonna eat ice cream. Okay, but like, what do you want? Yeah, you one want ice cream ball? Do you want it in a cream? Or do you want like one one scoop of ice cream or ten million of them? But they're Think ten million that. little ones, and they just don't they don't have the same consistency. I can't get it in my mouth. Tim Gettys. Quantity. See, I'm, I've I, you're awakening me in a way that I'm really impressed by Nick with this whole thing because like Thank I've you. always thought of Dippin' Dots not as the ice cream of the future, the ice cream of the present. I am lucky that all of us get to live in this beautiful time, the time of our Dippin' Dots. Uh, but I've always thought of them as the superior uh, form of ice cream because ice cream a lot of work. You have to like do the the kind of the dig spoon to like get a, a bite out of. Whereas mm-hmm. Dippin' Dots. You're just kind of shoveling these things in. And like the consistency is different than ice cream, but I don't want to say worse. But there is still the flaw that we need to use a spoon at all. Yeah. You gave me a great idea. What was that. what was the greatest invention of the mid-90s? Ooh, sliced bread. The second one after spork? sliced bread was undeniably all well, sports up there. The sport no, is a fucking no. great goal. close. Get real close. Eminem Ring minis. Oh. Eminem oh. minis. Oh, in the, yeah. In the yeah, container. yeah. You guys see where my head's at here? Dipping mm-hmm. dots in the Eminem Minis thing. Let's make it a little large. You know what I mean? Let's get let's make, maybe Why make it like the, the size hole? of a fl- of a flashlight handle. Yeah, sure. you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Sure, yeah, sure. Fill yeah. that thing with dipping dots. Yeah, do that one more time. Yeah. yeah, keep yeah, doing that. Maybe the XL one's like the size of a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Here, here. Okay, so I love this. I love the creativity, and I don't want to sit here and shit on it. But I'll say the yeah. one thing that <laughs> yeah, <you> do. <laughs> the one thing that Dippin' Dots doesn't give you, aside from the fact that they just don't taste like anything and they're a waste of your time, don't is that stop. you don't you don't get discoverability with Dippin' Dots, okay? And what I mean in that is when <laughs> I, go, I would love what? to know. <laughs> Why? Please, please expound, Mike. <laughs> Mike, I'm gonna take you on a little ride with me. Take me on a ride. One, this is gonna be a walk, so strap in, put your little put your Velcro shoes on, get yourself in your little stroller, and let's go. Right? It's a Saturday night. Me and you, Mike, we're hanging out in San Francisco. When and if you move down here, where we might be getting a little bit, of the, the, you know what I mean? A little bit of the tarantula, right? We go, I want some Ben and Jerry's ice cream, right? I want some chunky monkey ice cream. We go there, first bite, vanilla. Second bite, is that a fudge pretzel that I've just discovered, Andy? Uh, is that buried underneath the, the first layer of sediment in this amazing it. ice cream? What's below that? Is that caramel? What's going on? This is a journey I've taken you on that is very much like Willow Wonka's Chonka Factory. And at the end of it, if I don't rat that fucking dude out, maybe I get the whole factory. If you do rat that dude out. If I do rat that dude out. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's right, because Charlie was a fucking snitch, right? Charlie snitched on Slugworth. You knew from the beginning, though. You know what I mean? Like you. I did when I was a kid. I was like, Charlie, don't do it, man. Fucking loyalty. Loyalty. Yeah, these hoes ain't loyal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how long this last? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you are one of our listeners, you want to support this, go over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can do you get all sorts of cool access to all of our stuff, right? Like you get the shows ad free, you can be watching live, like live chat right now, just like piano fish tank is. What how did you come up with that handle? I don't want to know. Uh and also you get to write into the show. We got a couple questions that I want to ask you guys today of the sexual nature, if I may. How do we feel about that, Kevin? How do we feel about a question about dating and sex right now? Uh, good. Strong. Great. Well, here it is. Uh, Alan Ordonez has written, says, how long? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
Alan. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> We're useless. We are so useless. Like, this is it. This is it, y'all. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. That is a reference to Jurassic Park 3 in the airplane when, they ha- when he has the dream and the raptor talks to him for a second. And if you didn't watch Jurassic Park 3 in review, you wouldn't get that. But here we are, making you laugh with the quality. Uh, I got I got Andy the other week on, I forget what in review it was, but I made a reference to our, our myth force let's play where i said green could be stamina or poison or anything and Andy... elf. <laughs> <laughs> anyway alan writes it it's oh man damn it i clicked off it. oh there's how long <laughs> oh man <laughs> did you ideally date someone before moving in bonus question what about dust sex how long do you wait before moving in with someone and or bumping uglies Snowbike mike let's start oh with wow. you that's a great question right there. You know, moving in is going to be a complicated one because we got to have an idea of where your relationship is. How comfortable are you with this person? What's the situation, right? Like, am I living out of my van and I need a place to stay? And maybe I convince Andy to let me move in with him. And, you know, now I don't have to live in the van anymore. That's positive. But moving in, probably for me, let's say year and a half minimum. Year and a okay. half we got to be together. I, I would say that. And then sex, you can bump uncles, bump uncles whenever you feel like it. You know what I mean? Like whenever if we, you feel like if it. we got the connection, you you go do it. You know what I mean? You go make that happen. That's how I feel. Okay, you just break it off immediately whenever. No, whenever break that off, bro. Yeah, hell yeah. Andy, we're I'm dating. the same when it comes to bumping ugly. It's like yeah. and a half. if they're in the mood and you're in the mood, just do it. Like wait, mm. we're this isn't a fucking Christian America. You know what I mean? Like we don't got to worry about offending. You know, like, it's all good. Just bang if you want to bang. Um, as far as moving in, I'm kind of with Snowback Mike where it's all, there are certain circumstances where I'd say a year and a half is probably, a year and a half to two years maybe. But mm-hmm. if you're around the eight-month mark and my lease is up, mm-hmm. hey. And she has rent control? She has rent control? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe it's 10 months in, you know what I mean? But if it's like a four or five or six month in, I'd probably just go look for another place, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if no. you, it's certain circumstances, if there's certain things that are kind of uh, going to drive you out of your current place, much like Mike in his van, mm-hmm. it's like, well, yeah. why don't you just come stay over here? Like, it, it sort of seems like a convenient kind of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd say about a year and a half to two. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's that seems about right. But it also depends on where they're at as well, like – um, I could have gone on for several years just based on like my living situation. So like if I, uh, when I was dating my ex-girlfriend up here, like we dated for like about over two years and I could have kept on living alone over here because again, one bedroom apartment over there, that place is really small. So mm-hmm. is my place. Let's keep it separate for now until mm-hmm. we kind of think of the next step of getting a bigger apartment. Cause I'm not trying to move into this place. That's like equally as small as we're my trying place. to downgrade. Mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Share. Mm, no. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I like the idea of moving in, right? I am somebody that wants that, you know, I want that other person here. I want that energy all the time. I like that. Right. But the issue is if that goes South. Trust me. It's a long conversation. Who's keeping the dogs and who's who's getting up and going? You know what I mean? I've been right. there, done that, done that. I, I also want to point out that anyone that is fortunate enough to move in on a permanent basis with Snowbike Mike will have a fun time sleeping the first couple nights. Uh, <laughs> because as you guys know, as we've established already on past episodes of the Kind of Funny <laughs> Podcast, Mike sleeps with the TV on, his phone <laughs> right by his face. All the lights on at, and everything's at max level because, and I quote, he's scared of someone coming in and killing him at night. And there's an old lady battling a <laughs> raccoon next door, which is and, how our stream and, ended the other day. I'm playing, uh, me and Mike are playing Overwatch too. And then Mike just goes, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta hit the, gotta help the old lady next door. And I was like, what? And he just left the stream. And I was like, yo, you all good? Everything good? He's like, oh yeah, the old lady next door fighting a raccoon. <laughs> God damn, Mike. Which is surprising you. because multiple times Mike has jokingly uh, talked about leaving pizza out to attract one or all of the hang the tank bears to come into his house I and am. hang out with him. Which is uh yeah, that's pretty special. So Mike, I can't wait for you. I can't wait for you to settle down with someone and uh, just 
have her on the podcast and and, and hear those experiences. <laughs> Tim, what say you went? How long do you wait till, till you move in with someone? It's the classic love and sex stuff answer, right? Mm-hmm. Honesty, communication. That's where it all starts. I feel like there is no answer for this. It's all context based of who you are, who they are, the situations you guys are in for both the sex and the moving in. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't think there's a timeline. I think that there's so many different contexts, especially in this pandemic world that we live in where living situations are more complicated than they've ever been, um, especially like the last two years, like when it first really started. Like that was like, make or break for a lot of couples. Uh, I know a lot of couples that broke up during the time, but then I know a lot of them that were kind of forced to move in together sooner than they ever would have. And it ended up being so far so good. Like it strengthened their relationship. So I don't really think that from any experience I've had or the people I know, I don't think that there's a pattern of success rate or fail rate or whatever. I do think that like most things in life, the older you get, the more experience you have with just life in general. It kind of just prepares you a little bit more. Uh, So as always, the more comfortable you are with you, the easier it's going to be to find Mm -hmm. a partner. And if they're comfortable with themselves, you guys can have conversations that aren't as awkward or weird and Mm -hmm. kind of of like be able to talk through the pros and cons of, of a situation so that it's not what Andy's saying of like, hey, let's move together somewhere that's the same size but it's more like if we move somewhere together we can get somewhere a little bit bigger you know and like that type Mm -hmm. of thing but that requires a level of uh self-reflection and like self-understanding from both parties yeah that are completely different like uh things you're evaluating but i feel like that's step one um and then the sex is a little bit easier but even then i am like i've said this a million times i am so so happy that I had Gia for so many reasons, but like the fact that I just don't need to worry about having sex with any other person in my entire life mm-hmm. is like probably the greatest thing of all time. Cause it's stressful out there for, for these motherfuckers. Like I, I would not want to be trying to have sex in 2022. Mm-mm. These mm-hmm. hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> it's hard out here. Hard out it's here. hard out here. <laughs> It, it's it sounds it every time anyone talks to me about dating i just think to myself god i'm, I'm right with tim or i'm like thank god somebody will put up with me on a regular basis <laughs> amen uh, and and honestly you guys, i told you guys this before right and i'll say it again and, and i think the same rings through for for kevin if either of our spouses kill us please go to the trial and be a character witness for them please make sure 100%, they get off 100%. because they just be like listen play this podcast back Nick himself said he deserved it. Don't For you understand? All the stupid <laughs> shit that I give my wife. If she stabs me in my sleep, please come to her aid. And just the internet needs to back her for sure. I will say this as a, I don't think there's a time period necessarily. Like, yeah, I would say, I would agree that a, a, a year and a half to two years is good. But I would also throw an age uh, bracket into that. I don't think people should be moving in <laughs> together below a certain age. And I think that age should be like 28, 29, 30-ish is when you should be considering that stuff. Yeah. I've known people, and I'm not saying it can't work out. Obviously, I have some friends that's working out very nicely for that have moved in earlier and gotten married earlier. But I would say for me, from my own personal experience, play around in your 20s, have fun, be safe. Don't think about settling down until 28, 29 when you've established yourself a little bit more. And this is going to come sh- as a shock for people. As far as sex, I would say wait until the second or third date to disappoint them. Um, beyond Sorry. that, yeah, Kevin, where are you at, Kev? Yeah, Kevin, where are you at? Oh, I mean, the, yeah, the, the sex is like whenever it feels right for both part people, obviously. Um, and that could be, you know, before the first date, if that's what the moment, the, the thing, or like a month or two months in, like, you know what I mean? Before, like, you, you just, know, before you, you to the Applebee's, we're hanging in the back of the Applebee's. <laughs> 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 you, you know what I mean? Like sometimes <laughs> lightning Applebee's. strikes that way. We're in the restroom uh, of right? Chevy's. Yeah. <laughs> And I We're actually, at Noodles and Company. <laughs> I have the I have the same philosophy. I have the same philosophy for like moving in. It's like you're mm. gonna know like if like I I don't know. I, you just are hanging out twenty four seven right off off the get like the bat. Like if suddenly you start a relationship and then you're basically living them with right away that's not the end of the world then maybe that's how it's happened to me before and now i'm happily mayor married over 10 years later you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying that's so it's different good. for everyone you got to feel it out and it's how much like if you love experiencing every moment with that person you got something special and hang on to that you know yeah i will say that uh and again everyone just has their own experience and uh the people that they know around them and your shit may vary but uh every couple i know that's been together more than like five years that hasn't moved in together ends up not working out 
Like there does come, like, I think in my experience, at least there hits a point where you're like, that is a big step that you guys need to take together or else it could be pretty destructive to your guys' relationships and like your individual kind of paths as a, as a person. Yeah. Well, my, I mean, I know for speaking from my own personal experience, I never, ever wanted to settle down or commit at all, but my life got way better when I did. And it happened at the right time, which was good. We had to do some work on that though. I had to do some work personally on that. Um, I do want to, I want to throw something else at you guys right now. Uh, this is another question that came from Patreon. It's a little bit of a walk, but this story has, <laughs> this story has a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And before we answer his question, I do want to say one other thing that he said about me uh, that we'll get to in a second. But this is a bit of a long one, but I'm going to read it right now. This comes from Jeremy. Jeremy says, I've been a longtime best friend who just upgraded from KF Games Silver to Gold in order to be able to catch the KF Podcast post shows and be able to write in. So about a year ago, I did something very stupid. I microwaved my phone. Now let me explain. I sl- <laughs> it's fucking- now let me explain. I sleepwalk. All, be- all because they subscribed here. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I sleepwalk. It doesn't happen very often, especially as an adult, but it's pretty intense what it does. About a week before this incident, I snapped awake and found myself sleep- sitting on my living room couch at 3 a.m. instead of upstairs in bed with my wife, like when I went to sleep. Uh, I have very steep steps, and I've fallen down while awake, so this is a little alarming. So a week later was the phone incident. Basically, from my perspective, what happened is I suddenly snapped awake to the smell of something burning. I immediately registered that I'm standing in my kitchen with the microwave running, and something is crackling inside of it. I quickly oh, stop no. and open the door, and immediately can see my phone is completely toast. I literally cooked it. I have no idea how long I had been uh, running for, but sure, it was smoking and telling all the in- uh, all the internals are fried. Uh, what made me think of this was the fact that I lost all my New York pictures on my phone because of oh. not having it synced. Uh, this included my photo of uh, I took of Greg when I met him in, at, in Battle Creek. I thought of this when you guys were discussing whether or not you guys would likely do meet and greets in the future. My question finally is, what is the dumbest or craziest way you have ever destroyed something accidentally or on purpose? Cut this down as needed. I ramble uh, horribly. Uh, Also, if none of this works, maybe Andy can Photoshop me into a photo (laughs) of Greg to replace the one I lost. For sure, Andy can do that. Before I ask you guys, before I pose the question to you, this is a section of... This Wait. document that we have, that when people fill this out, I didn't even realize people fill it out. But there's a section on this that says, uh, we're doing a so, this is your, your, your first kind of funny podcast or something like that. What advice do you have uh, to give a new best friend? What joke do they need to understand? Interpret it however you'd like. Be assured. So basically, we've asked these people, what, do you, what would you tell someone who's listening to the kind of funny podcast the first time? And Jeremy, who just gave us this incredible story that's that full of ups and downs, and as we can say, I laughed, I cried. I, I want more of it, says, in response to this question, what would you tell people for their first time watching? We all hate Nick. We love Nick, but we hate Nick, yeah. is what he said on this one. <laughs> Solid. It's yeah. spot on. Spot it's, on. It really is the, uh, yeah, the, you're, you're the two gods of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Where Dan, where Dan says, I've never loved somebody more that I've despised. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Real quick, real quick. Yeah. I think this should work as a PSA of like, there's nothing wrong with like downloading Google Drive or Google Photos and having that just sync. I don't think that like, all right, Google's going to know what your information is, I guess. They already do, folks. They already do. Guess what? Remember the other day, Tim, where I was making a joke about a sponsor and I just brought up a random sponsor and I said Lumen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm getting... Twitter ads for Lumen, not even our yeah. Lumen. Lumen. Another Lumen. Kind of funny. Yeah, I, the same thing's happening. I'm but, getting a Lumen ad for what is a? It's like a for <laughs> database facility or like it's some other. It's a completely different company that I'm getting for. But they just heard the word Lumen and now I'm getting ads. It's fucking crazy, Kevin. It's crazy. Look, all I'm saying is, like, I just take care of your stuff. You know, like it, you never know when your phone's gonna be. <laughs> Course, in yeah. the microwave and you're gonna lose all these photos if you've got it in the cloud it's safe that's all i look I'm saying. forward to it though honestly i've got so many thousands of photos on my phone that it's Nick, just you don't have seven... feelings like a normal person it's true i just want them all gone i might throw my phone out the window i don't think anything to my iCloud. i don't know how that works they keep asking me for more money and it's like two dollars a month and i'm like that's too much that's a whole starbucks right there i know tim's got gigabytes of fucking drives in the back with all of his old uh excel spreadsheets Terrible. of all the list videos that he wants to do i'm not like that if they get wiped out i'll just who cares 
I'll just start again. My wife has all the incredibly important ones. She goes through my phone every once in a while, sends herself a couple pictures of stuff, like moments that we want to cherish. But at the end of the day, I can't even remember what happened this morning. So needing a visual guide to, to tell me what happened before, eh, who cares? It doesn't matter. I live in now. I live in the moment, Mike. There is no past. There is no future. <laughs> this is my moment right now. Yo, you're um, talking to the big dog. I'm living yeah. in the moment lately. That's how I've been doing it. What are the best ways that you've destroyed stuff, though? Does anyone have a good answer? I'm racking my brain and I can't think of anything. Yeah, I, mean, I once too, dropped too. my phone in the in the toilet and pissed on it, so like that was a tough one. <laughs> I but feel like, like a lot of people have that, <laughs> that happens. That happens not, yeah, I feel know? like everyone's done that at least. Yeah, well, that happens. I mean, hold on, I do have one question though, like the pissing on it part. Like, can you? Well, it's like I was uh, peeing already. The, the roller fuck coaster. Fell out yeah. the back cool. Stop. Got it. Yeah, got it. It's the urinal, okay. right? Or or is yeah? Was it a urinal or was it an actual toilet? In the stall, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to throw that bad boy in there. I've been close to that. But then I remember people's stories of that, and I'll put my phone away. I've never dropped my phone under your Yeah, you got to put your phone away on that. I've only ever dropped my phone one time and cracked the screen, and it was after one of our anniversary streams. I can't remember what it was. I was leaving, and I think we had some guests over, and I was walking them out. And as I was walking them out. It was Chloe's Chloe's parents. That's right. And and her brother. Right? Yeah. And I remember walking them out and that old gate kind of, I went to close it and I just was so tired. I fumbled my phone and I dropped my phone a thousand times. And one, this one time it just crashed and I felt so stupid. I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy that keeps this the cracked phone like Andy for six months and cuts his hand and shit. So it's never happened. Right Unbelievable. That never happened. Just like Andy. <laughs> that has never happened. Just like Andy. <laughs> now, the I, chat. I, I John my phone one time. Where, like, I, I knew my phone was broken, Kevin, and I knew, like, all right, I'm going to get a new one. And I, it was a I remember this. Google Nexus 5, and I put it in my sink, and I left it in the sink, like, and I went out for several hours, and I came back, and that motherfucker was still on. And it continued to work for another couple of weeks, even though it had been <laughs> underwater. It was fucking crazy that it still functioned for as long as it did. I was very surprised. Didn't you recently is you buy let's uh, the four and then like it was broken. You had to get a new one, but like you took it into the shower without knowing that it wasn't waterproof. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't have water resistance. I just yeah. assumed. Yeah. I assumed. Yeah, you Kevin, you know, I put I put my phone up there on the top of the thing and let you yeah, know my I dad let you. Right, play. You. And you would think it's fine. You think the water? No, this the the model the A model didn't have IP water resistance or whatever mm. the hell. It's unbelievable. Mm. unbelievable. You gotta learn the hard way sometimes. Yeah. I don't remember the story in the chat you were about to bring up, Tim. Oh, you don't. Well, no. uh, Kevin Kevin Lena says uh, the one that comes to mind is Tim destroying Andy's laptop with his. Oh hat. my god! And god. yeah, 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 yeah. That is the ultimate version of this story for me, where I'm usually pretty good with stuff. Like I, I raw dog it with my phone. Never had no. a problem. It's been so all good. Crazy. So cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. It so cool. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Live life Shut on the up. edge. <laughs> yeah, Bro. Yeah, man. Uh, but no, it was the uh, Game Awards a couple years ago, and we were at the studio, and um, it was when they did the most ridiculous surprise reveal of Joker from Persona being the new Smash Brothers character. <laughs> so and it was just the most wild, out of nowhere announcement where it's like the trailer started playing it looked like some persona bullshit and then all of a sudden the letter turns over and it's the smash logo and it took me by surprise so hard i lost my shit i stood up and i had a hat on because i didn't do my hair that day and i like threw my hat and it just fucking like it was just like a chain reaction of dominoes of like it knocked over a beer water all the shit just all over andy's laptop and it just destroyed it like it fucking killed it like right there oh, Andy tried but- tried draining it it did not work like it was, it was a, a disaster it was about half a cup of beer close to a full cup of water and the funniest detail that somebody picked out from that moment when we clipped it out recently and it went up on tiktok the funniest detail about it is that when i am flipping it over to just let all the water pour out the razor logo is you see its life leaving the body you see the <laughs> razor logo lit up green and it's like it's struggling to stay on green. Eventually, it just fades away. <laughs> and it was like the most dramatic thing. And that laptop was completely gone. And uh, it was luckily I didn't have a whole lot on it because I had just gotten it from Razer. It was a mm-hmm. sort of a sponsor thing. And shout out to Razer for all the times that people tagged them in the DM, in the tweets and then mm-hmm. 
Razor DMing me and being like, hey, we'd love to send you another one. Uh, you know, a neural model, like, fuck yeah, awesome. But it was just one of those, like, God damn, it's 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 completely gone. Or right, did you send the link over? I yeah. did just send it, Kev. If you could bring up around the like uh fifty <laughs> second mark would be a great place to yep. to start this guy. But yeah, that was definitely uh one of my low points in life. But hey, the, the great content. <laughs> it's it's super cool that Razor sent you another computer, Andy. But the big question is, did they send Tim another hat? <laughs> no, they did not. Well, I don't man, think they. No. One the one hype hat was ago. fine. It was still doing well. Yeah, I still have that hat. We're okay there. <laughs> oh, oh, when you see, look at how much look at the light. Fell look at the light on the green. Like, <laughs> you couldn't oh. have done that better if you tried. I know <laughs> that was incredible. Audio listeners, it went down exactly as it, what happened was it, it caught the it caught that just the lip of that beer. And just went it hard on it. Can we you rewind it again, time? Kevin, yeah. to the point wow. where you see, like, look at the lights on the razor, like, on the back of the screen. <laughs> look at it, just oh freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's so much water on oh that. Andy, yeah, Andy fucking picked that laptop off and poured a cup full of water off the keyboard. Uh, that's, it just that's kept so on special. pouring out. I was like trying to go on with this show, and I was like, I gotta unplug this thing. I don't want shit to explode. I'm so scared. Oh man. <laughs> It was whatever gone, reason, dude. that reminds me of the time we were doing the, I think it was like what, it was a January 5th stream probably, and Greg just decided to stop <laughs> and took the whole fucking studio down with him. And I'll, I've never been more like flabbergasted by something because it was like our that studio, the old studio, of course, was held yeah. together by like scotch tape and bubble gum to begin with. But me and Kevin were like, we don't have an explanation as yeah, to why this that seems. <laughs> This, this seems actually seem dangerous. Good. Yeah, this seems bad. That, that you we could taped interrupt. down. We yeah. taped down the area where <laughs> it was like nobody stop here. around here. Trying to explain well, that to all the guests that came over that night was interesting. That was an well. Interesting then we had we had like electricians come in and be like, "This doesn't make sense." Like, yeah, this, yeah. this yeah. won't shut down by stomping on an area. We're like, "Well, it did twice." Yeah. <laughs> so like, I don't know what to tell you, man. It actually did that. I think it was a um extra life actually oh it might have we been extra Car life. carboni was there as well that makes sense and that, was that was the same extra life where josh was so drunk that he could he couldn't, couldn't play the game the rules. he yeah. couldn't explain the rules and then john drake started going hard on him and josh almost cried <laughs> <laughs> i felt so bad for him because i was laughing so hard it was one of the episodes so it was one of the extra lives that greg greg had dressed up as wado and we were pitching small wado the game mm -hmm. to John Drake or the mm -hmm. movie, whatever mm -hmm. he wanted to make. Cause whatever he had just announced he's working at Disney. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it was that one that at one, <laughs> just crazy Greg, like stomped in that spot and the whole stream went down uh, for the second time or whatever. And it was just like, it was a perfect kind of like, if you were watching the stream moment, it would have been amazing to witness because it's chaos, chaos, ramping up, ramping up, stomp, phew, this whole stream is gone. <laughs> God. Well, I remember God. the the first time it happened, we were playing Killer Queen, and we were getting our asses kicked uh, in the, the 5v5 game, and it was around where we were finally about to win, and we had the snail going across. It was about to cross the finish line, and then pff, the whole stream oh, no. just shuts down right before we fucking won. God. <laughs> what a fun time. I look, I look forward to winning it back to those new shenanigans yeah, new nonsense new shenanigans. i can't i can't i can't wait to see what we destroy in the new studio uh, when we get to move in finally uh ladies and gentlemen this has been a fun one this has been a good it one has. we got a lot of things remember your two takeaways your homework from this if you're watching is that when we say the word shroud we all laugh so hard when greg's back on the podcast and he just doesn't fucking understand it because he's an idiot. And today he had to miss this podcast because he was pooping in the woods. And ooh, what came out of that bush? A snake right up his mm -hmm. chooch hole. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We love you guys very, very much. Of course, if you are a patron, stick around right now for our Patreon-only post show happening right now.